One of the most basic functions of Lane 1 takeoff is doing the actual takeoff itself for construction uh, projects like landscape, hardscape, irrigation construction projects. So a takeoff is simple. Uh, the concept is a takeoff is just where you're going to measure and count different materials so that you can get a material list that you can assign prices to and markups to in order to give a price to a customer uh, for that project. So what I want to do is I just want to show you a simple takeoff here to so give you a little bit of a process of how to do it using Lane 1 takeoff. I've already set up my project here, giving it a name and a bid date, and I've, I've named the section that I want to do. So the first thing we're going to do is the landscape portion of the project. So I've named that section here landscape. When I'm doing a takeoff for a construction project, what that means is I likely always have a PDF of that landscape design for me to be able to do the takeoff on. So I want to add in that PDF file here so I can start doing my markups and measurements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Add File, Upload Files, and I'm going to find that plan here on my project. So here I'm going to do this demo plan for my computer, and I'm going to upload it into Lane 1 Takeoff. So now that it's uploaded, I can start doing my takeoff now. So what I want to do is I'm going to click Markup Plans to see that PDF. So here you can see we have a real simple landscape plan. Now likely whenever you do it, you're going to have a much, much more complex plan. This is just one island from a commercial project just so I can show you some of the basic tools to be able to do it. You can see here we have the plan. If I want to navigate around in lane one takeoff, I can use my mouse to, to scroll my mouse wheel up to zoom in and out. I can right click to be able to pan around or I can hold down the space bar and then left click and pan to be able to move and navigate around that plan. Now the first thing that you're always going to do when doing a takeoff is to set and calibrate your scale so that all your measurements can be accurate. So you can see here up at the top right we have the set scale area and you can see that no scale has been set yet for this plan. Now, a lot of times if you have a full landscape design, there's probably gonna be a scale bar on there, or maybe it's just gonna write out what the scale is, like one inch equals 20 feet. Uh, but hopefully, ideally, they may give you even just a measurement on the plan so that you can calibrate it. That's what I have here. I have 13.98 feet for the width of this dumpster pad. Uh, so what I wanna do is I wanna calibrate my scale. So I'm gonna click set scale, and I'm gonna click measure so that I can measure this distance and calibrate my scale for measuring everything on this plan. So you can see that I have my mouse has changed to a red crosshair. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna click once on this end, click again on this end, and I'm gonna tell that that's 13.98 feet. I'm gonna click save. Now you can see my scale is accurately set. If I wanted to check it, we do this often in commercial projects just to confirm the scale is correct, I can measure the width of this parking lot space. So we have a quick measure tool here at the top that I could do this with. So I can click to activate this tool. My mouse is a crosshair. I can click on this end once, click on this end again, and you can see that parking lot space is nine feet wide, which is accurate. Most conventional parking spaces are nine foot wide. So now I know that my scale is accurate. I'm ready to start doing my takeoff. So the first thing I need to do is I need to start adding in materials to count them. Here I have emerald arborvitae around the dumpster pad, so I'm going to add in to count those. So you can see my landscape material list over here to the left is blank. I'm going to click my plus arrow to start adding in materials. These are emerald arborvitae, and since I've done these before, the auto suggest brings it up. I can click it. All my details are what I did at last. I'll click save. And now that material is here in my list to count. To count. So to start counting those, I simply click on the Emerald Arbor Vita. Now that measurement is, accurate, is active. I can zoom in and click once on top of each one to count them. Paint around. And now I've counted each one of those Arbor Vita. So I would do the same thing walking through this plan to count each one of these shrubs. So let me do that now.
So there, I've measured and counted all of my objects, or which are my trees and shrubs here on this plan. Now you'll notice I have another one over here called the Liriope that doesn't give me a single count like these do here. With the Liriope, this is what we call an object group. So this is a plant grouping that I need to be able to measure how many Liriope are here in this area for the shaded area. So to do that, I'm gonna add in my material, which is a Liriope. A four inch pot. And I'm gonna choose the object group function. And here you can see I've used this one before, so I've set my spacing to be 18 inches. So I'm happy with that, I'll click save. Now my Liriope is in here and I'm gonna click to activate it to add it, add it in and to start measuring. To do object groups, you do it like you do all of our polygons for areas, uh, for, for volumes, that sort of thing. You're gonna click once to drop points to outline this area. Now since this one's curved, I can hit smooth curves or I can toggle that on with the letter C on my keyboard as a keyboard shortcut to draw curved points around here. You can see my mouse crosshairs changed orange to let me know that I'm in curve mode. I can hit C to get out of it whenever I've got to go around a sharp angle. And I can hit C again to be back in curve mode. And now when I'm done, I can simply double click to finish that shape. I can also press enter to do it. If that's your last shape, and maybe I finished it too early, I can hit enter again and it's gonna reactivate that shape. If I place the point in a wrong spot and I wanna delete that last placed point, just simply hit backspace to keep deleting previously placed points. double click to end it and you can see I've got my Liriope measured here so now one thing that you'll notice about it is instead of giving me any kind of square footage measurement for this shaded in area because we told it it was on 18 inch centers we calculated there's 33 here in this area using a triangular spacing formula so now I've measured all my plants for this takeoff the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my sod area, which is this, this little patterned area here in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in, let's just say this is Bermuda sod. I'm going to add it in and I'm going to choose it's an area measurement. Uh, and I want to measure these in square footage. So I'm going to leave my unit square feet. Click save to add it in. Now I'm going to click to activate it. So now to measure this sod area, I do it just like I did that object group which is clicking once around to place points. If I need to pan like I just did, I can right click and move move the pan or page around. I'm gonna do this curved, turn off the curves. and I'm gonna measure just this area for side. Now, one thing I can show you is, is how to edit shapes once you've already placed them. So say like down here, I want this to be a lot more, a little bit more accurate than what I did. I can hit escape and I can be in selection mode. In selection mode, my mouse is a pointer and I can click on anything to move it or to edit it. So here I wanna edit this area. So I'm gonna click on it and you'll notice that now when I've clicked, it gives me all these little dots, which are the vertices that I dropped when I measure, measured it. So I can hover over those and I can grab them and move them around to edit it to get a little bit more accurate of measurement. You can see here, whenever I hover my mouse over where there's not one on the edge, it allows me, I can click once and I can place a new vertice. And for this one, if I want it to be curved, I can just double click and it's a curved vertice. So if I wanted to be really super accurate, I could go around and, and, and tweak these points that I place, getting it exactly right to be exactly on that line to measure that side area. So you can see we've measured this side area, 1,626 square feet, and that, that area is measured. 
So I've got two other things left to do on this takeoff to wrap it up. Uh, one is the plant bed areas, and it looks like we've got another area here that's probably some river rock. So uh, let's do the plant bed area first. So I'm going to do uh, mulch for my plant bed mulch. We'll do three inches deep. So this is a volume. A volume measurement for mulch, three inches deep. I like this good brown color. I'll click save. Let's go ahead and add in my river rock so that we can uh, we can do it first. So river rock, let's do three to five inches. An area measurement for that. Click save. Okay. So let's measure our mulch. Now I do have mulch underneath in this, this tree ring here, so let me measure it. I'm going to click my mulch. What I can do here, since I, I included sod, since that was in the middle, I can actually click this cutout overlaps. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to remove any of that sod that was underneath my, my mulch measurement here. You can see, let me move this tree annotation out of the way. You can see I've, I've measured my mulch, but then also cut out all the sod that was underneath it. You can do that using these scissors here at the top, which is our cutout tool. That'll do the exact same thing. It will remove uh, any sort of measurement from, from an existing measurement. So now I've got all my mulch measured, and I want to measure the last little thing, which is this, this rock area here. River Rock, simple quick little measurement just to get a little bit of area here that we have for River Rock and be able to cover that area with gravel at this drive through. So there we're finished counting all of our material. Now let me show you a few last things to wrap up our takeoff. A common scenario is to have topsoil for all your sided areas. I can do this quickly in lane one takeoff without having to remeasure this entire area of sod. To do that, let me first add in topsoil to my material list. Now that topsoil is added in, I can find my Bermuda sod. I can click it, click edit, and then down here you have associated materials. I can click add material, topsoil, and then I'll specify underneath all this sod I want four inches of topsoil. So now you can see. I've calculated our topsoil for this sod area, 9.8 cubic yards. Just to show you, I can click it and select the sod area and see lots of other details such as the perimeter of it, but see here I have the 19.8 cubic yards of topsoil. When you're finished with your takeoff, you'll also want to download the annotated plan, possibly to save on your computer or maybe to email to a customer or client, and then you need to prepare your list for applying prices and markups. For your estimate. You can do that here with the download folder at the top, but I can also head back over into my project summary view to prepare my list for download. You see we have two columns, the estimate quantity and the place quantity. The estimate quantity is a manual number such as if you want to round up. So for this side I might want to round up to 16, 1650 square feet. But if I'm happy with the quantities from the place, I can just simply hit this arrow and it will reconcile the two boxes. I'm gonna round up this topsoil to 20 cubic yards. So now my list is ready to plug into any sort of estimating software or possibly drop into an Excel spreadsheet to apply prices to that. Now to do that again, click this download folder in the top right. You can see here I can download the annotated plans with or without quantity labels. I'm going to leave my quantity labels so that I can give this plan to a crew for installing and they could see the square footage total for this area. So you can see here it opens up Adobe with this annotated plan. Now let's download the material takeoff report. Here you have a report of everything that we did. This report can be customized. I can toggle on and off totals such as the actual quantity versus the estimate quantity. I can send this report to 
landscape hub with our integration fill out a few details and they'll send you back a free quote in less than a day for these materials at your local nurseries or I can download a export a CSV of this file which will allow me to quickly put it into any Excel spreadsheet or or upload into any ERP or estimating software another quick way to get into an Excel spreadsheet is simply copy and pasting so if I turn off those icons then I have just this list I can copy and paste this list into any Excel spreadsheet or an email to send to a nursery or even a Word document for the proposal. This allows you to do multiple steps quickly without having to repeat data entry. So there you have it. That's how I would do my takeoffs. Now you could do the same process for a much bigger plan that had multiple pages and a much bigger complex. Be sure to check out more of our videos and our YouTube channel to learn more tips and tricks about how to use Land One Takeoff.